Hey there, Leo. Welcome to your 2019 six month forecast. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a look at the first six months of 2019 for you. So January through June. Uh, this is a general reading. So please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Yes, if you would like a look into your own personal six months or however long you would like to look at, it doesn't have to be just from January on. It could be at any moment in the year um, if you would like a a, just a quick look into what could be coming down the, the pipeline for you, please go ahead and email me. These readings are available for personal consumption. Yeah. So for this reading, I am going to be pulling uh, one card for each month, January through June, from the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. Uh, this deck is fairly new to me still, so I will be reading from the book a little bit. And then I will be clearing, uh, pulling some clarification uh, for each month from the Tarot. This is the Crystal Visions Tarot deck. Yes? So without further ado, let's get started. Leo, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Leos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the first six months of Leo's 2019 year. Please show us uh, an accurate representation of what Leo can expect to experience during the first six months of 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so let's see what we've got for you. Starting with January, let's see what we've got for you, Leo, for January. We've got healing, okay, February. The Maiden, all right. March. For Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. March, please. Desire, ooh. That's a new one. None of the, none of, for none, any of the readings that I've done so far for the signs, none, not, that one has not come out yet. I'm interested in seeing what that one is. Um, April, <laughs> for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, April. The Youth, very interesting, okay. May, for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, for the month of May, 2019, please spirit. There it is, Death and Rebirth, and June. For Leo, June 2019. So there it is. Faith. All right. Excellent, guys. So I would say a pretty eventful six months. Um, healing. We're starting January off with healing. So are you coming out of, I feel like many of you are coming out of a pretty rough situation. Um, throughout probably 2018, January is going to be a really, I feel like a very refreshing, very healing, obviously we do have the keyword of healing, but a very refreshing month for you. It's like a breath of fresh air. It's almost as if you can take a breath and just like be for a minute and not have to worry so much about the past, what happened in the past. I really do feel like you're going to be spending January reconnecting with yourself, working on healing. You might be staying fair to your fairly to yourself in January in order so that you can do some healing you also may be working on healing others you might be a healer yourself you could be starting a healing business I'm seeing for some of you um, really embarking on some sort of path towards you expressing yourself more as a healer when we get into uh, February here we have the maiden um, and to me that talks about fertility it talks about youthfulness um, possibly virginity in some way. Not necessarily that you are still a virgin, but um, taking on that that virgin, virgin type energy, if that makes sense. Um, it also is a place where you start to get in touch, in tune with your sexuality. So uh, you could be meeting a partner in which you know you could really explore your sexuality with. You may actually be trying to explore your sexuality. Then we get into March, which is the card, which is desire. 
So there could be even more sexual expression there. Um, but what I'm feeling like is there's some sort of fertility that may come after this healing in January. In February, there's some sort of fertility for, uh, 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 that kind of awakes, awakens within you throughout the month of February. And then by the time you get to March, that fertility blossoms into some sort of desire, okay? And then as you move into April, then you have the youth. The youth is uh, obviously the progression from the maiden. Um, the youth is number three, the maiden is number two. The, ma the youth is the companion to, or the counterpart to the maiden. The maiden being fe uh, feminine energy. The youth is masculine energy. And I really see you in March, I'm sorry, April. In April, uh, uh, moving in a direction that is very true to you, um, off the beaten path. And it's funny because I think Cancer got this card in the same position, if not the same position, in a similar position. Also, Cancer got Death and Rebirth, but they got that card for June, where you have faith. So you might be connecting with a Cancer. You might be. You might have Cancer, cancer in your chart, um, but or you may just want to, depending on where, if like Cancer is a, is a major placement somewhere in your chart. You might want to watch that video um, because there might be some corroborating themes there or events. But uh, April is a month of going in your own direction. OK, definitely. When you get to May, then you have death and rebirth. Death and rebirth is about um, changing the way that you approach life, changing the way you act, changing the way you think. Um, letting go of expectations of when something will manifest things like that. And then faith, I'm not too familiar with that card either. So we're going to read into it. But obviously faith could be just having faith in the universe, right? Uh, because there is definitely a lot of change happening here for you, Leo, in the very first half of the year. Uh, so this really having faith in the universe, that the universe has your back, that the universe can provide for you is, is a central theme for June. For some of you, it could be that your faith in the universe and in yourself is now paying off by the time you get to June. And you could be showered with a ton of abundance here. All right. So let's get into uh, some clarification for each month. We're going to start with January, which is healing. Uh, healing, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. But I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit because I'm being guided to do so. There it is. Healing. Keywords. Healing. Release. Purification, forgiveness, transformation, infection. Key phrases: To be human is to be wounded. A time of connect. Uh, excuse me. A time to connect body, mind, spirit, and soul. Let go of definitions and labels. Nurture passions and seek pleasure. Authenticity, honesty, and laughter. Find the source of disease and distress. You need to forgive. Do what's necessary to increase well-being. Do not dwell on the unchangeable past. Shift your attention. Do not allow your pain to hurt others. Seek treatment. Do not be afraid. Okay. So, um, I, and this is actually what I was picking up on in the very beginning. You know, when I was saying that some of you are coming out of a pretty tumultuous time. Twenty. <laughs> the page of swords wanted to pop out here. Um, and underneath the page of swords is judgment and the world. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shuffle and I'm going to get some more clarification, but that's a special message for some of you. Um, you could be being watched uh, maybe on social media. Um, there could, or you could be watching someone else. But there is a bit of a, but also the Page of Swords is about learning. And what the main thing that I was getting with the healing card in the very beginning of the reading was that you guys are coming out of a pretty tumultuous time. 2018 probably, probably was very, very rough for you. Um, and it could, it could really even extend past 2018. This could be some situation that you've been going through for maybe a few years. And now you're finally getting a chance to really release, to heal from it, to forgive. Uh, uh, forgiveness is a central theme here for you in January. But keep in mind that forgiveness is not for them. It's for yourself, okay, so that you can be released from the cycle that you're now coming out of. All right, so judgment. Uh, I forget the last card that was underneath there, but judgment is definitely speaking of 
redemption, rebirth, um, maybe reconciliation, but it doesn't have to be in the sense of you know, reconciling and now you, you're, you're, this, this, these people or this circumstance is a part of your life again. No, it could just be reconciling in order for the, both, both you and the other person, the other people, or like the circumstance, whatever, can move on in your own respective ways with almost like a clean slate, kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, or at least not, if not a clean slate, then just clear of any of the drama or, resentment, the pain that um, was was generated through that experience, all right? But let's go ahead and get some more clarification for healing. For Leo, for the month of January. All right, that's pretty beautiful. Yeah, look at that. Okay, underneath the deck is the Six of Pentacles. So I really feel like you are moving towards a more balanced state of give and take, okay? You have the Empress here. Abundance, fertility, um, healing, definitely, forgiveness. All right, so there was some sort of situation that was very unjust because you have justice here, and that's, on, that's in reverse. But, uh, but you've gone, you've progressed from, nine, from the Nine of Swords of worst-case scenarios, not being able to sleep, um, just being consumed by this situation to the Ten of Swords. From the Nine of Swords to the Ten of Swords, the worst is behind you. The situation has ended... And actually, healing is card number. Oh, actually, no. Healing is card number eleven. So you have you have the ending of the situation, the nine, the completion of the situation, the ten, and the healing in eleven. All right. So January could really be a really big month for you. And there you and there you go. The King of Wands. This is you, Leo. Here you are, standing in your power once again, uh, reassured, resurrected, uh, feeling. Uh, getting to a position where you can feel good about life again. And I'm not saying you felt all that bad, but I just feel like there's definitely an opportunity for you to feel a new zest for life that you may not have felt for some time. Or maybe just experience your life clear of whatever this past situation was, okay? <laughs> but whatever it was, it was incredibly unjust. Because justice is here and it's in reverse. Now, this could have been something done to you or this could have been something you've done to others. Maybe your pride and your ego got in the way in certain situations and it just caused havoc for you. But either way, you're healing from this or you have the opportunity to heal from this in January and you're moving towards a more balanced give and take in your relationships. I really feel like a lot of you have learned a very valuable lesson when it comes to reciprocity, all right? Not giving to situations any longer that aren't really giving back to you. Because Leos can be very, very open-hearted, very kind-hearted individuals, and people will take advantage of that if they can, right? And that's something you're learning. So next, for February, you have the Maiden. And so now that you've gone through all, all of this healing, now you're in a position where you can start to rebuild yourself. You know, this is getting back in touch with you, okay? This is um, getting in tune with your sensuality, your sexuality. Um, this is, I, I, I am seeing this as a bit of an extension of the healing energies that were initiated in January. I really feel like in January, Leo, you many of you went through the major, we'll say the major surgery, and this is more on the universal scale. Now, some of you may actually, now that I'm picking up on it, some of you may have a major surgery done. Or if it's not a major surgery, maybe you may have some sort of surgical procedure done. But what I'm really seeing is uh, surgery being performed by the universe, okay? And that could be in the efforts of like removing certain people or circumstances from your life, right? And so you go through that healing process. And then when you get to February, you have the chance to heal on a more personal level in healing the bond between you and yourself. Yes, this is, I'm definitely seeing, uh, picking up an energy of reconnecting with yourself, with the maiden, all right? But let's read a little bit about this card. Card number two, the maiden. Q 
Keywords, fertility, independence, self-esteem, confidence, self-expression, self-exploration, self-interest, sexuality, creativity, selfishness, codependence, timidity. Key phrases, follow your dreams, discover your passions, focus on self-discovery, address self-imposed limits and restrictions, increased independence, seek your own answers, release fears I'm sorry, release feelings of fear and abandonment, craving attention, needing rescue, express goals and desires, be true to self, acting with empathy. And I really don't think any of you will be needing any sort, it's not this, I'm really not picking up a damsel, damsel in distress energy for you guys in this month of February at all. Not with this energy. You're very much independent beings to begin with. So... I really see you connecting with yourself on a greater scale and learning to love yourself more than you ever have in the past. Definitely reconnecting with yourself, with your desires, with your passions, with your, se with your own sense of creativity and sensuality and sexuality, um, which then leads you into the month of March. But let's get some clarification for the maiden first because I'm definitely seeing the progression here. All right, Spirit, please, some clarification for Leo for the month of February. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, we've got the Five of Swords so far. Ooh, and the King of Pentacles. So uh, I'm seeing here the Six of Swords. Excellent, excellent. And the Four of Cups. All right, wait, hold on. Let me just make sure there was nothing else that flipped over. But I'm seeing you really becoming solid and stable in your own personal foundation. Um, whatever whatever abundant energies, for, for fertile energies are around you within the month of February, it's really allowing you to stand on your own two feet and get yourself even better manifested than you may have been in the past. And I really see you guys making an effort to walk away from, whoops, yeah, see, I, I'm not even, I'm having trouble holding the card up because you're just rejecting, walking away from this Five of Swords energy. This could be toxic masculinity, which is a, something that really comes through for me when I see the Five of Swords. Um, One-upmanship, self-defeating situations, um, lose-lose situations. Nobody wins, even if it, even if technically you won the round and you, quote, came out the victor in the situation, you still didn't win. Okay, so people are still, this is a lose-lose situation. And I really see you officially leaving all of that behind, Leo. And I see you leaving it behind in favor of you. Because with the Four of Cups here, this is often about a missed opportunity. or Some people see it that way, unrequited love, um, being bored with something, questioning something, questioning some sort of offer. But when it comes to this deck, I see this as someone focusing more on themselves and their own happiness, their emotional stability, than whatever is going on in these three cups of social endeavors behind them. And you see, this ace of cups here is the only one that has the lotus in it. Those other three cups are completely empty. She's not even paying attention to them. She's more focused on herself and her own cup of love, okay? And so that's really... That's really quite beautiful. Now, also, you could have Earth in your chart, potentially another a, a Taurus, another fixed sign, which is Taurus, uh, or Capricorn or Virgo, or you could be moving f away from some sort of Earth sign. Maybe if you were in a relationship with them, I'm picking up for some of you, it could be a marriage that you're deciding to move on from, um, but this is all in favor of you, yes? So now we get into March and you have desire, all right? So all of that work that you've done, the healing that you went through in January and February, because I am seeing healing energies for you in the maiden. Um, and this is more, more of a, like a personal internal healing, reconnecting with yourself, with your desires, with your emotions, with your sensuality, with your sexuality, with your own personal creativity. Uh, the, Queen of, the Queen of Swords did just fall out. Um, but now I, I really see that you have, uh, in the month of February, you've probably done some serious surgical work of your own in cutting out things that no longer serve you with that Queen of Swords that just popped out. And because of that, now in the month of March, you have a chance to really reconnect with your desires, to get acquainted 
to get acquainted with your desires. What is it you truly want to do? Now that you're pretty clear of all of this old energy, this old situation, now you have a chance to really get connected with yourself on a much deeper level and to understand your desires on a much deeper level. But let's go ahead and read this a little, a, the, the key words and phrases from this card. Because like I said, I've never really encountered this one, so I'm really interested in seeing you know, what else we can pick from it other than just intuitively. There it is, desire. Key words, desires, wants, dreams, ambition, goals, price, gestation, manifestation, con uh, consequences, selfishness. Key phrases, what do you desire most? How much do you want it? Desire compels action. Make another attempt. Great expectations, great disappointment. Ground your desires in reality. What you desire will have a price. Wishful thinking. Has your desire wa has your desire waned, 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 whatever, or, sorry guys, or changed. Let your conscience be your guide to desire something at the expense of another. Selfish desires mirror a lack within. So, I really feel like in the month of February, you had a chance to really reconnect with yourself. And now in March, you're able to explore your desires, like I was saying before. But let's go ahead and get some clarification here. I'm gonna give you one more shuffle for my Leos and we're gonna get some clarification of desire for your month of March. For Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Nine of Swords. Okay. Oof, the Moon. The Nine of Wands. Very interesting. Death. There you go. And then this one. The Hanged Man in Reverse. My, my, my. And then we have Queen of Wands. This is Aryan energy here. Um, this is a cardinal energy. So I really feel like there's going to be, there's definitely an energy of moving forward okay there's a big transformation that has happened for you and i really feel like you're coming out of the darkness here you have the nine of swords and the nine of wands for the longest time you were fighting against the current you were doing things that you didn't necessarily want to do but that were quote expected of you but it wasn't truly what you desired it wasn't truly what you wanted to do but you kept on doing it you kept on fighting that's the leo in you um you're very you can be, be very much a people pleaser you're very much a fixed energy also so it's going to be hard for you to change your direction, okay? So this nine of wands could symbolize you continuing to go down the same path, even though, you know, you know, you were feeling like it wasn't quite right for you. But then you had that, 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 that voice in the back of your head saying, this is not what I want to do. This is not what I want to do. But then also, which is represented by the nine of swords. Also though, that nine of swords could represent, um, knowing that you need to make a change somehow. And because, you know, as a, as a Leo, being a fixed sign, major changes are, pro are really not the most comfortable thing for you. Same with the other fixed signs. I mean, Taurus is like that too. Capricorn, not Capricorn, Capricorn's a cardinal. Uh, Scorpio and Aquarius. So Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, Aquarius, you're all fixed signs. So major change is something that does not come easily for you, okay? But here it is. You're coming out of the darkness. Transformation, the moon, and the hanged man is in reverse, all right? So you're transforming out of this moment of darkness, out of this fearful energy. Um, you've come to a realization. You've seen, you're starting to see things in a different way. You've reached some sort of enlightenment, and now you're ready to move forward with the queen of wands, all right? This would be your counterpart to the king of wands. This is Aryan energy. This is cardinal energy. But this is someone that is not afraid to go after what they want. This is someone that is not afraid to go off the beaten path. And this might be really something very, very new to you, Leo, in the sense that you're a fixed energy. You don't really do that too often, but 
it's definitely time. Why? Because now you've healed, you've reconnected with yourself quite a bit, and now you're more connected with your desires than you may have ever been in your life in the past. Okay? So now we get into April, and we have the youth here. So this is you continuing on your new path. The youth is very much about going off the beaten path, doing what it is that he wants instead of what it is that everyone else wants him to do. Doing something not because someone says it's what he should do or what he has to do, but doing it because it's something that he wants to do, okay? Because the youth is very much connected to his desires. The youth can be seen as a pretty selfish individual at times. But um, the youth can also be one of your greatest allies. If he is on your side, he's on your side. I mean, he's committed. He can be. He can be very, very committed to something, if it's something that really resonates with him. If it vibes with him, he's not the type of person to do something out of obligation. And I really feel like that's the energy that you're coming into now. Okay, for the month of April. All right. So let's get some clarification of this for Leo for the month of April 2019 so it's interesting Leo you've progressed from the maiden uh, in which you got in touch with yourself, you got more in tune with yourself, you were in tune enough to recognize more of your desires, and now you're taking steps to act on that with the youth. So you've progressed from the maiden to the youth, and that's a really cool, that's really, really cool actually. So for the month of April, Ten of Pentacles. So, okay. Wow, this is a lot here. This is sure is a lot here. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Underneath the deck, you have the magician. There you go. So you're creating something new, Leo. Okay, and that's fantastic. Look at all of this. Look at all of this. Excellent. Wow. I, wow. Leo, wow. This is intense. Um, so first and foremost, what I want to talk about here is the Ten of Wands in reverse with the Seven of Wands, all right? So this is that energy that the, the youth brings into the situation, releasing the burdens, all right? He's not about to be weighed down by anything, and he's definitely going to keep his boundaries up to make sure that he has his autonomy in place because he's not about to be told what to do by someone that doesn't even know who he is, that doesn't understand him, that doesn't know what he truly wants out of life, what he wants to experience out of life, okay? Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords. I mean, a bam, all right? This is truth and honesty and connected with the desires, all right? Seeing things clearly. And I really feel like that's the energy that's cutting you, helping to cut you out of this Eight of Swords that you've probably found yourself in up until now, we'll say, May of 2019. I'm sorry, April, excuse me, April of 2019. So now we have the Two of Swords, the Ten of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, and the Page of Cups. So there's still a little bit of indecisiveness here, but here is, here is some of that fixed energy again with the King of Pentacles. So technically this would be Taurus. Um, you could be dealing with a Taurus. You could have Taurus in your chart, but... Uh, this is someone who's very financially oriented, very much well manifested, and is seeking um, to continue to maintain his longevity and the longevity of his family. Well, here, here that is, Ten of Pentacles, all right? Legacy, longevity, um, business opportunities. I, I feel like there's a dream that's coming through for you right now or during this month between the Page of Cups, but you're still in, you might be indecisive about it. And that indecisiveness is how to proceed, how to execute, how to pursue this situation. But I definitely feel like now that you're in this youth energy of independence, strong-willed, knowing what it is, or at least having a greater idea of what it is you want out of life, now you have a better opportunity. I mean, you're definitely inspired by something and you're cutting yourself out of any situations that hold you back between the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Swords, okay? So 
And I mean, the Ten of Wands is in reverse. Seven of Wands is upright. All right, so you're releasing any sort of obligation that you don't want to take on or you don't need to take on, for sure. And you're working on manifesting something new with the magician here, okay? Longevity is the key phrase here for your month of April. You got your eye on the prize and you're going for it with vim and vigor. All right, Leo? That's fantastic. Okay, so now let's get into the month of May, which is death and rebirth for you. Okay, so there's major change happening here. Major, major change, okay? Death and rebirth um, is the cycle of life, is the, the circle of life, you could say. Um, it's change. It's changing the way you approach things, changing the way you see things, changing the way you view yourself, even. This is a big transformation here for you. Letting go of expectations, also. Um, it is releasing... The ego's hold, or it, it, it brings a lesson in releasing the ego's hold in expectation of a certain outcome, of a certain time frame. It's also releasing any sort of, especially coupled with the youth of the month before, the energies of the youth from the month before. This is releasing society's hold on what you should or shouldn't be doing with your life, right? All right. So for the month of May for you, Leo, let's get some clarification here for you. All right. Well, there's that Ten of Wands again. Oh, boy. But we have it coupled with the Ten of Cups and the King of Cups. Look at that. So now... And underneath, <laughs> yeah, underneath the deck is the Ace of Wands. So there's some sort of family situation here. Now, with the Ten of Wands coming out again, this time I feel like you are taking up some burdens, but these are burdens that serve you in some way. These are things that you want to be a part of. These are the burdens of, um, uh, of going after what it is you want to accomplish. There could be some sort of family situation here, some sort of emotional fulfillment. You could be trying to start a family. That could be the death and rebirth, or those could be the burdens that you're coming up on that you could be accepting here. King of, King of Cups, Ten of Cups. You could be dealing with a Scorpio energy too, but this is another fixed energy. King of Cups is Scorpio. So now... Um, and this is very family oriented, I really feel like. So some of you could be working on starting a family, choosing to build a family, choosing to start a family. Um, but also some of you are in, embarking on something new here with the Ace of Wands that you're very inspired by, you're very passionate about. And ultimately this would bring some sort of emotional fulfillment for you. It could be creative um, in, in, the, in, in nature. So like maybe art, music, poetry, uh, visual art, dance, something, that, something in that way. But ultimately, this is something that brings you great emotional fulfillment or potentially could. And so you're pursuing it and you're taking on the burdens to do that. Why? Because you released all the other. Because remember, the Ten of Wands came out for the youth, but it came out in reverse for the previous month. And so now that you cleared up all of your, uh, most if not all of your space, you now have the opportunity to take on more responsibilities or we'll, we'll call it burdens, but that's just a key word. It's just a catchphrase. It doesn't need to feel burdensome, but it's responsibilities. Taking on responsibilities in order to serve what it is you're looking to manifest, okay? Definitely, we definitely could be speaking of pregnancy, uh, entering fatherhood here. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be fatherhood. It could be uh, motherhood as well. You know, these are just energies. It's not gender. Mm -hmm. Especially with the Ace of Wands and the Ten of Cups. All right. So then finally, for your month of June, you have faith. Now, 
for some of you, this really could be your faith is being rewarded now because of your faith in your in yourself, your faith in the universe. Some of you are needing to have faith, especially with this new uh, journey you're embarking on here, okay? So let us see here. I do want to read a little bit of this card. Okay. So let's just read a little bit of this here. Faith. This is card number 24. Oh, there it is. Keywords. Faith. Self-belief. Confidence. Divine connection. Trust. Serenity. Surrender. Key phrases. Faith is beautiful. Self-belief helps you to overcome. Self-belief and faith inspire confidence. Doubt breeds mistakes. Cruel words can do lasting harm. Do not give up because of past mistakes. Be kind and supportive. Be yourself. I'm sorry. Set yourself believable goals. You matter. You are enough. You are not alone. Do not be unkind because others have been unkind to you. Take delight in compliments. All right. So this is definitely an energy of needing to have faith in yourself, potentially already having the faith in yourself. And like I said, being rewarded for that. So let's get some clarification here, because I really do feel like you're embarking on something brand new. And by the time June comes, um, I see it potentially coming into fruition, or at least the beginnings of it are starting to be noticed somehow, are starting to be perceived. All right, Leo, one last shuffle, and then we'll get some clarification for faith for your month of June. Here we go. Clarification, please, for Leo for the month of June, part of faith, sun, moon, rising, and Venus for June of 2019 for my Leos. Thank you so much. Ah, look at that. The star. And this one, too. Ah, that nine of swords again. <laughs> the star, which is the card of faith in the tarot. All right. Um, and it, ah, look at that. The ace of cups. Let's see if there's anything else. You do have the hermit here, and the hermit seems to have flown off to the side and is somewhat reversed. And to me, that's saying don't, don't forget what you have gone through earlier in the year. Don't forget what you have learned about yourself. Like, don't, don't allow fear, don't allow this, the Nine of Swords energy, to get you to forget what it is you have learned about yourself and how much you've grown and progressed, okay? Maintain this self-love here, Ace of Cups, because you really have come into a situation from the past where you have learned to love yourself on a deeper level. You've gone through some serious healing with the star, and the star is all about faith, okay? Wow, underneath the deck, you have the King of Pentacles again. So you're solid and you're good and you're manifested, you're well manifested and you're continuing to manifest well. You have judgment, excellent. And you have the three of swords, ooh. So, rebirth, rebirth after the heartbreak. It's almost as if the past heartbreak that you dealt with, like what you were dealing, what you were healing from in the beginning of the year is kind of coming back a little for full circle. But I think it's coming back in the sense that you're kind of being reminded of where you came from, what you, what you went through in the past, what you experienced that helped you get to this position in the here and now, what you experienced in the past that helped you or led you down this path over the past six months, leading up to June, faith, healing, the star, faith, hope, wish fulfillment. Don't allow fear to get in the way. Because the nine of swords is just fearful energy that's like, that's. Uh, self-fulfilling prophecies. The more you think about something, then you're going to manifest it. So don't even waste your time with it. Instead, spend your time connecting with the Ace of Cups and the Hermit energies. Now, the Hermit did come out in reverse. 
but it's also an energy of finally realizing who you are with the hermit in reverse, no longer needing to be in that hermit stage because you are being reborn here, judgment and, and the star, through this heartbreak, three of swords. All right, Leo, and you're well manifested, you're abundant, you're powerful, you're grounded, you're stable, you're financially secure, you're good, or you're in the process of becoming good. You're actively manifesting that, and you just have to have faith. I just love, I love that these two cards came out at the same time, faith and the star, because both of these cards are about faith. So that's just beautiful. All right, Leo. So there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in for this. I hope this was helpful for you. Please do not hesitate to go ahead and let me know how this resonates for you. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. I wish you all the best for the first half of 2019. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation in 2019, uh, at a six month forecast, three month forecast, whatever, just go ahead and hit me up, send me an email and I'll get you set up. All right, take care, Leo. Thank you so much for tuning in. Much love to you, Mwah! bye.